look, you're writing a book. And the thing about a book is that in the end, there's only one darn person talking in this book. It's you. That's it. And what you've got to do is you've got to figure out a strategy to get people to believe that what they're encountering is the world. You know, what they're encountering is multiple voices, what they're encountering are communities, collective. They're sort of encountering the, the kind of raucousness of, the, of what we call life. And just at a, a most basic level, you're, you're trying to give some sort of realistic verisimilitude. And so for me, one of the strategies, there's a lot of strategies of doing this, you know, I mean, this is kind of a, a narrative problem that requires a, a strategic solution. For me, one of them was introducing these multiple voices that while they may have had the same roots, uh, they, they seem different enough so that it gives a sense that you're in, uh, in a room with a community. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just an attempt to, again, it's an attempt to give us this ridiculously inert two-dimensional thing of feeling that it's somehow connected or somehow metaphoric for the raucousness, the wildness of our world, our life. Of course, there's a tremendous amount of self-doubt. Are you crazy? You spend half your time wondering if you're going to jump off the bridge. But the real question or the real point is that if you are not lost, then you're at a place someone has already found. I mean, if you feel familiar and you feel comfortable, you're in mapped territory. What's the use of being in mapped territory? I mean, if you're going to spend a X number of years in a book, you might as well do something new. And that requires you being completely lost. The new requires you to be completely lost, to have no bearings. Because again, if you feel like you know where you're at, someone's already done it. And so that, I think, if anything, I mean, there's a, there was a, a certainly very distressing component of taking 11 years to write a book. Let me not minimalize that. But one of the great comforts of it was that I said, you know what? You're not stupid. You're not stupid. You read. You're an okay writer. Part of this is you're doing something new. No one said revolutionary. No one said world changing. Just new. And the new requires that feeling that you're completely at sea. Usually the best criticisms I get are from my readers. Because readers have a lot more time to sit on a book, have a lot more time to, um, to reflect. They're not under pressure to come in and word amounts. And I've gotten like good ass emails from people who've got some good criticisms that I know will help me in my next books. You know, it happened in my first book. I got great letters that helped me with Oscar. And with this Oscar book, I've gotten great letters that are going to help me for the next one. I don't think that the answer to all our problems is going to be one book. Yeah. But I do think the answers to all our problems are going to be found in the creative. Because the creative, when we create, we're basically sending a little map and sending it forward into the future. 95% of the map, percent of the maps disappear, vanish, get destroyed. Yeah. But some of them are going to make it through. Some of them are going to make it through. And it's remarkable what they might do. It's remarkable who they might affect, who they might help. I mean... Look, we're humans, man. We've got a long history of screwing everything up and of victimizing each other. But we also have a long history of continuity, you know, of resistance and of creative survival. And that's always been helped, helped tremendously by our arts, by our songs, by the cultural stuff that we pass on from the past into the future. And that's not a bad thing to be a part of. In a world of many vocations, this seems like a, not a bad one.